How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and do this mission called uh, Barefoot Cobbler, where I've got to go and uh, take, like, there's a trailer that's rolled, and uh, there's like vehicle spare parts, and I've got to flip the trailer, put all the vehicle spare parts in that are there, and then take it to uh, the Metal Rolls factory. And uh, I kind of, this was just a bit of, bit of me time, a bit of messing around, uh, this is sort of the route I was taking. Um, yeah, this was after I unlocked the sawmill, so like I said, it was just sort of... Me messing around, having a little bit of a laugh. I ended up sort of quitting the mission halfway through, not because I was bored of it or anything. I just then started editing the video, so I finished it off today. There's also something pretty cool. Um, once you actually unlock this, the reason I did this mission is because, again, in the rewards bit, it says access to location. So I wanted to know what that means because it's at the metal rolls, metal beams factory. It's where you can turn rolls into beams. Um, yeah, so I wanted to know what that meant because we, we can already use that part of it. Um, yeah, that's why, again, I'm sort of messing around. I was using this little setup, <laughs> sort of my Swiss Army Dolphin. Got the Dolphin, got a loaf on the roof, uh, holding a Scout fuel trailer like a rugby ball for now. And, uh, yeah, it was, to be honest, the drive there takes about 14 minutes. It was about 23 unedited, so I've cut a few little boring slow bits that are just, you know, creeping through snow at, like, half a mile an hour. Um, but, yeah, dropping the hammer, and let's go. And at the beginning as well, you'll see a little bit of, sort of, I've not done it for ages, it was quite fun to sort of test it out when uh, eventually that scout trade is kind of going to jiggle itself free. Sometimes it can lock it in there pretty well, but for whatever reason this time it just wouldn't let me clamp the crane anymore. So uh, in the end I was like, fine, I'll fly you like a kite, and you see, because of my many hours of kite flying on White Valley, this was a very enjoyable experience. Imagine if you were just waking up in the morning, you open your curtains, and you see that thing go flying past you at 50 mile an hour, and you're like, god damn. I don't know what that guy's up to, but he's probably going to get it done. Um, yeah, I'm well aware that I'm pretty boaty at the minute. I mean, obviously, uh, loaf on the roof isn't that bad with the dolphin, but the crane also raises your centre of gravity quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'm also flying a scout <laughs> fuel trailer like a kite, which isn't the most uh, low centre of gravity thing to be doing. But, you see, I mentioned it in the tips video ages ago, and it does work. Like, I moved the crane over to the left, kept the trailer nice and low, but... I know from previous experience already, going down this hill on Ersk River, it kind of, the camber drops off to the right, but then you also sort of hit these rocks at the bottom here. And yeah, you could easily tip. If I just had the uh, fly in the trailer in the air right behind me, there's a good chance I could tip there. But yeah, kind of use it as a weight distribution. Weight, basically. It's like, obviously, if I, if I needed to go somewhere, I'm going to start tipping to the left. I'll move the crane over to the right. And uh, yeah, like I said, driving there alone, I mean, the the mission itself probably only took 12, 13 minutes or something. The drive there was about 23 minutes, and then, um, yeah, I mean, long story short, with this, uh, the Metal Rolls factory, when I get there and I complete this mission, it unlocks a repair station at the, f um, yeah, the factory, so you can, like, repair all your stuff, basically, which is pretty good, because, again, it's so far on the other side of the map, it's near enough the opposite side to where the garage is, and it isn't an easy drive to get back to the garage either, like, so having a repair station over that side is uh, pretty bloody handy, but there's also something else I kind of found out that was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, I can near enough turn it, I mean, not into a garage as in I can spawn vehicles there and that, but a full-on repair station, a fuel station, even like a sort of, in the end, a mobile fuel and repair station from that location, so uh, yeah, it was well worth doing, I'm glad I did. So again, I just left the uh, trailer kind of dangling over to the left a little bit because I know sort of the whole way down there it's I'm going to generally be leaning to the right. And I mean, yeah, I'm bringing the, uh, the fuel for this one because I've got the loaf roof rack. I don't even know if these two would have got there just with the fuel on the uh, loaf. Probably not though because one, I was aware it's pretty far to go, but it's more how slow the terrain is that, yeah, you're just going to be eating a lot of fuel. Like I said, for most situations, the dolphin can go pretty quick, and it makes a lot of use of that fuel, but some of the sections in these new maps, it just, it makes you go slow, and that's the end of it, and obviously once that happens, you don't suddenly half your fuel usage, it still sits up in, like, the high teens, low 20s kind of thing. Uh, again there, though, just moved my trailer more over to the right, because getting up that hill, I, again, know from experience the other day, I rolled, what was it on there? I think I rolled the Zix, 605R. And I would say the Zix 
with a loaf on the roof is better at not rolling than this. Like, uh, the dolphin in that is pretty good. It's definitely planted pretty low down and all the rest of it. But obviously it sits a little bit narrow. I do believe that uh, Zix sits a bit wider, so... Uh, and again, I'm kind of sorted now, so I'll put the crane back behind me. Go back to just flying it like a kite. And around now is where I basically was like, ah, sod it, I'll, uh, I'll stop for now. Because it was really slow snow up front, so I just sort of quit. Edited that uh, sawmill video. And then when I loaded it back up, my truck was back behind me. And for whatever reason, the game does it every now and then. It like um, auto-unpacked the loaf, so it just sort of fell off the roof. I could have quit the game, reloaded, and blah, 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 but I was like, sod it. I'll, I'll, it only set me back, like, 30 seconds. And yeah, I'll just take the loaf behind me. I was kind of messing around. I knew it was probably not the best idea to uh, have him on the roof with this kind of terrain and camber going on everywhere. Um, I just edited that section out. All I did was go, go through that slow, watery section there, and that was literally probably four minutes alone edited out of there, just crawling along with the winch, really, for the most part. The dolphin can get through there, but there's chunks of ice in there, and every now and then you just, yeah, like the angle it makes you lean on and all that, you get stuck on a bit of ice. So I just have to keep sort of winching forward to break it. That's why I've cut over to the beach now. And I looked with the camera behind me a minute ago. I'll probably use more of this beach section to cut along, because it's, uh, it's basically, yeah, just flat blue ice, which will do. The dolphin's got chains, so it's going to have no trouble on the ice. I mean, this was instead of uh, the other week, I kind of did it as the crow flies, and I ended up going through that death mud section where the tattering got stuck. Uh, the Zix just gets through there, but it is seriously slow, but it's still it's nice that it actually can just drive out of it. And the old dolphin, at this point, is uh, tipping. A lot of trucks don't like this little section. I mean, it's kind of an easy-ish way. But what I should have done now, really, I should have been in the loaf, because obviously the computer just can't drive the loaf like I can. <laughs> So, manual control, stick a winch on the old dolphin, and we go. See, look, start to pull it in, start to retract towards it, the loaf, grabs that rock, hugs it. So this is my rock. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Without my rock, I'm still a goddamn horse for a vehicle. Without me, my rock is useless. Um, yeah, so long story short, I sent the loaf through the gap, as you do, because uh, he's a goddamn beast and he can handle it. And I knew this dolphin would kind of tip again. But yeah, that's why I sent the uh, the loaf forward. Stick a winch on him. He'll hoove me through there. Done. It's still worth it. Still quicker than the death mud bit. I'm just going to edit like... F I'm literally five truck lengths ahead of where I am now. It's just because the trailer's facing the wrong way. I have to turn... It wouldn't give me the winch point to just quickly spin it around as usual. But yeah, I was literally a couple of truck lengths ahead of where I just edited from. Um, so this is like, there's a little sort of village there, I suppose. Nipping along now, we're almost coming up uh, in a little bit. If I turn right, I'll get to the Northern Aegis installation map. This is a little section of road that's out. It's funny, because there's all ice here, and you, as you can see, the dolphin all but gets stuck. It's going like 0.1 mile an hour. Goddamn horse with vehicle. Gives me a boost. Like, quadruples my speed. I mean, he's always just trying to do the right thing. I mean, again, long story short, I edit it here because eventually I get hooked on some ice, so just slowly winch my way out of there. And normally I would leave, like, all the game playing, but as I said, it was, like, if I didn't edit anything, it probably would have been about 25, 26 minutes just for me getting from the garage to the mission, and the video would have been about 40 minutes long, and yeah, it's just, it's a bit of a, uh, a massive video for, like, the actual mission itself is pretty easy pretty chilled mission and it's a pretty good reward at the end like I said I mean it helped by the fact that I had a goddamn horse or vehicle with me and you'll see why near the end highly recommended so the bit I'm coming up to now yeah as I said if I go right now I, I'm near the uh, the gateway to the Aegis insulation now I'm gonna go left though obviously and keep cutting up to the top corner. Like I said, once you've done all those roadblocks and bridges and everything, you kind of free up like a good 60 to 70% of the map that's all kind of like on the left and at the bottom of the map, or the way I have it orientated anyway, with like the Cosmodrome maps on the bottom left. Um, but yeah, this top right section from like the Aegis insulation to like, yeah, the top right corner and that Metal Beams factory, 
It's still a bit of a punish, and it's pretty cool, though, that they have added this, like, repair station over there, because, like I said, you're so far away from civilization, so to speak, you're going to have to be recovering to the other side, which is now potentially going to take you another 20-25 minutes to get back over there, and by the time you've done that, you may have taken loads of damage, used loads of fuel, etc., so it's sort of like, yeah, you can't really get there fully supplied, because you need a lot of your supplies just to get there. Again, I'm going to edit ahead. See the blue dot thing I drove in front... Uh, sorry, I put down in front of me, yeah. Because, again, that was just muddy, icy, like, going slow. I don't, I don't think I used the winch, but it was just slow cruising and probably just edited another uh, two, three, four minutes out of there. And this section coming up, this little water section, is quite boggy. I actually quite like this. Again, because it feels realistic. Like, that's... What I think some people misunderstand when I sort of say, oh god, this game's like doing this and it's driving me mad. It's not that I want just easy mode maps all day long. I'm not going to lie though, I would like a map that is just an easy, free-flowing, relaxed map. Like, by all means, put some horrors in there, but just put some that are a bit more chilled. But, it's the feeling of realism, It's that's what I'm looking for. Like I've said before, if you're going to make me go point one mile an hour in snow, at least make the snow look three feet deep, not three inches deep, because it just doesn't feel realistic, and then it breaks the immersion, because you're suddenly like, oh, that's nothing like real life, I don't believe, and I'm kind of, I can only really speak from seeing a lot of YouTube videos, but it is what it is, it's on video, and I've seen a lot of trucks handle this kind of terrain a hell of a lot better than we get the chance to, but yeah, this sort of section, at least it feels pretty, I could imagine a truck creeping through this slow in this kind of thing where you're literally driving basically through a pond with big massive rocks, chunks of ice what I mean again questionable on the old uh, frozen water and unfrozen water in the same place but <laughs> we'll uh, we'll give it a miss well the way it is anyway, I mean if anything ice floats how the hell it manages to have the ice on the bottom of the, the uh, yeah the little water section god only knows in the end it was best to kind of scoot over to this side just skip a little bit out of the way. There's a big fat tree there that's like an immovable tree as well. It's one of them that'll never disappear even if you keep crashing into it. Pretty handy here. Definitely nice. Driving along the wood. That's definitely what she said. It helped. Again, look at the life going in for a nudge. What a goddamn professional. Well, you can see already, I can't, I, yeah, I've already refueled once. I believe I refueled on that little beach section. Um, and that was already nearly a full tank. I'm also not that far off uh, needing another full tank. So that's already like 400 litres. So I would have got there, in fact, with the loaf and dolphin. But I would have had near enough no fuel once I got there. But this is what this uh, little metal rolls factory can actually kind of solve, in a way. And yeah, to be fair, I mean, the Dolphin is still pretty solid. The, the, since that gearbox thing has been broken, it's definitely uh, took a little step down, but like I said, it, it, relatively speaking, everything has. And these maps have certainly took a step up. But, all things considered, there ain't many trucks that are just going to handle this map at all. Somebody was saying as well, and uh, I reckon they... It makes a bit more sense where me and many others have been saying, why did they add the HX520, uh, the CAT CT681, and to a degree the Brigadier, because they're all out of the depth on these maps. I believe they have they must have fairly recently added this game to, like, is it Nintendo Switch and the Wii, maybe? Um, and because there'll be newer players that are now starting, it now makes more sense, like, they'll have a free... Cat CT681 and a HX520 at the start of their game and if they obviously buy the Brigadier they'll have that as well so in that context it makes a lot more sense because they certainly, I said it and again many others have like, they, those trucks make sense on the Michigan maps like yeah, Black River and Smithville Dam and stuff, they just they don't stand a chance on these maps I suppose the Zix really, the Zix uh, yeah, that was kind of our, our gift <laughs> for this phase so I got to this point, uh, give it a quick reducing with the fuel. And yeah, overall this mission was uh, not too bad. Obviously, try and be a little bit careful with rolling, because 
Again, the camera sort of lulls you into a false sense of security. It's only when you put it on certain angles you realise just how much you're already leaning. Um, there's the trailer. Instead of going round, there's tree stumps over there. And yeah, I don't want to get too close to them, so I'm just going to kind of pull the trailer towards me a little bit. Thankfully, there's not gone mad on tree stumps all around here. And the bit where there is quite a lot of tree stumps, I've just about got the reach with the crane and everything to kind of, yeah, reach over and grab the cargo instead of having to go in and get stuck. Surprised the trailer didn't tip on. See, there's a tree stump. Sons of bitches. Goddamn time wasting, sons of bitches. Uh, yeah, a little tip as well. For what it's worth, every time you keep your truck like this in an L shape, it's extremely hard to tip. Because if the dolphin was to tip sideways, it's got to literally lift the trailer right up in the air and over. And if the trailer wants to tip, it's got to lift the front of my dolphin up and over backwards. So, yeah. You're at most risk, really, when you're in a straight line, because that's when there's the least resistance to so just flip over. Getting my crane legs out for this one as well. I don't normally bother with them. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to the uh, crane legs, but not this time. Even though we all uh, we know full well the goddamn horse of a vehicle could rescue me, but still, I'd rather not make that a situation if I can. And yeah, you can see the other four things in the background, like they're just scattered around here. So it's pretty simple, quite handy in a way that it sort of gives you a trailer. Um, there. In fact, yeah, well, it, it's not the end of the world, but it does take the trailer off you at the end of this mission, just throwing it out there. So if you kind of plan on having this semi-trailer on this side of the map, um, yeah, I'd probably just bring one with you while you're at it. But I didn't have to. I don't mind. And uh, yeah, it's pretty handy that I didn't have to haul a, a semi-trailer all this way. And for those of you, I, I believe most people know, but again, there's like new players arriving every day. You don't have to stack all the cargo neatly, just as long as it's on the trailer more than it's not on the trailer. Click pack and it'll just jump into place. Which again is pretty cool, because like I said, with this crane, I wouldn't be able to reach like the cargo to load in the very back of the trailer unless I disconnect the trailer every time. This way I can just stack it on the front of the trailer. I'll have to click unpack and pack now, because obviously some of them are already packed, but yeah. They'll just jump into place, it's, it's pretty handy. And again, I actually quite like that. I appreciate that they've just done that in the game and not made it tedious, where it's like, nope, we're going to make you disconnect the trailer, and then, we, you, then you have to reattach the trailer to pack the cargo. Like, yeah. At least they cut a lot of faffing around. So that's why, yeah, I just stick it on there. I'm going to get this fourth one, but... We'll see him jump into place. Of course, it grabbed the wrong one. A fish. These cre crane creams. <laughs> these cranes are definitely. Uh, I think I was going to say crane and weak in one. It came out creams. Yeah, these cranes are a little bit weak these days. And as you can see, I mean they're not very uh, accurately loaded, but unpack, pack. They all jump into place and we're good to go. Yeah, see all the tree stumps down there? I was like, oh no. Just found my little path in there, I can see it. If we can just get to that point, at this point now, I was like, oh no. The dolphin, I mean, it's not bad for going over stumps, but once you get it kind of under the first two axles, man, it gets stuck. It's not good when that happens. Sort of a little roll forward then, even though I was on the handbrake, but it probably worked out quite nicely. Again, though, I could have fully extended the crane, and the cool thing is the crane kind of works off, I believe, like your distance you can grab stuff from is based on your winch. So because I've got the top winch, you've you have actually got pretty good reach. See, like, I'd never, ever be able to reach the back of that. It's pretty difficult to get the third cargo in, so three, four, and five, really. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. All that to go mad at the end, isn't it? See, 
see. Again, though, from certain angles, like now, you wouldn't really think I'm on much of a hill. You can see once I move it around. Yeah, got a bit of a lean going on. I'm just reversing out of there. Hell no, am I trying to navigate through those tree stumps. I know there ain't tree stumps behind me. That's the way I'm going. See, again, make sure I put it into an L shape. This way, I ain't tipping anywhere. And I can be pretty kind of blasé and relaxed about just throwing it around now. So now, though, hence why I <laughs> go delicately on the throttle. Now's when I'm at risk of tipping, especially with a full trailer. Sort of steered into it there because I could see it. Thinking about it. And again, steer into this hill that you'll see as well. I nearly go because I bump on those rocks, but floor it. Yeah, I mean, again, it does sort of work like the principle of a bicycle. If you're on a bicycle and you're going half a mile an hour, it's very hard to stay upright without putting a foot on the floor. You will tip, but if you quickly pedal and accelerate, you'll, uh, yeah, you won't tip. Ain't got time to tip. Uh, I believe I just, yeah, reduced, reduced me dolphin, the, uh, the loaf. And thankfully, it's not really very far to go once you've done that. It's only, uh, yeah, to that metal factory up there, which, as you can see, in the grand scheme of things, from the size of the map, is not too bad. Celebrate rehorn. Treat myself. I'm hoping that the microphone doesn't do it. I like, yeah, I genuinely, yesterday's video, I quickly clicked through some of the ed uh, editing and the audio because... The day before that, it did the crackling and I found it and I had to re-record some of the, uh, yeah, the audio. So yesterday, I literally checked the footage, didn't hear any crackling. And then obviously when it uploaded, I hit play on the video just because that's kind of when I check to see there's no problems if it'll actually start playing. And yeah, I heard it immediately. I was like, oh, no. Had to be on like a 50-minute video as well that takes bloody ages to render <laughs> and upload. I had to cut out, I think it was 31 minutes of audio, and in no surprise to anyone, this is generally the bit where I say, of course, I had to send in the horse when the uh, the Brigadier rolled on the third quarry hill. That is when the audio stopped crackling. Like, just the mere presence of the loaf made it get its act together. This road's not too bad, it's a little bit slow paced, but it's not the end of the world. I'd say it still feels more balanced than some of the places. At least it does kind of look like a bit of a... Uh, Long since forgotten road, it's had a few snow drifts going on. See, so see where it keeps dipping the gears. Like it never used to. At the beginning, the thing was was solid. That all the trucks were solid, as in like you just you floor and it absolutely motors along in first gear. It wouldn't change into second. It would easily, but what I'm saying is it'd go all the way up its rev range, so you had a very punchy first gear, and by the time you did change into second, you had enough momentum and speed that it'd comfortably get second. Again, I believe they purposely lowered that to kind of make them keep trying to jump into second early, and then they never have the power or the momentum. So you have that little thing where it suddenly cuts the power, drops back down to first, and you start again. I believe they did that to try and make the low ranges more... It make more sense, relatively speaking, and, uh, yeah, and then obviously when they added that fine tune, that just felt like they broke all the other gearboxes. I don't know whether they did that on purpose or not, but, yeah, definitely, ever since then. I, and I mentioned it to someone the other day, uh, I went and watched my Tega review video, well, a little bit of it the other day, because I was just curious, like, I wanted to go back to one of my pretty early videos. The thing's, like, uh, an absolute beast back in the day. In fact, I might even uh, go back at some point and kind of retread the same steps I did in some of those review videos and some of the trucks now and see if there is actually any noticeable difference. I certainly feel like there is. Like when you watch the bit where uh, I'm on Northport and I'm driving the Tega kind of just up the mountain with no path or route or anything, uh, I've got the Russian national anthem <laughs> playing in the background. It was doing, uh, it was doing its job. Yeah, it'll be interesting, possibly. I mean, if I get any interesting results, I, I may make a video on it, but... I would be willing to bet a small amount of money 
But um, yeah, the Tega, the Dolphin, pretty much everything will do a little bit worse than it did back when I got to make the early review videos before they started breaking too many things or nerfing. Uh, some things I think they've purposely nerfed. Like how easy now it jumps into second and it's not got the guts. Other things I'm not too sure. Like yeah, the gearbox, I don't know if they broke all the other gearboxes to make the fine tune more an inviting option or if that was just a an accidental kind of consequence of adding the fine tune I'm not too sure and um, yeah like I said that road is not too bad a little bit on the slow side but nothing crazy it didn't feel like painfully slow or anything so we get here again they've upped the speed that you can like it accepts your cargo I'm, I could hit it a lot faster than that. I just <laughs> now I don't want to go too quick, and it uh, robs a bit off me. Um, yeah, the uh, eight thousand seven hundred. But like I said, that's not the uh, the issue here. The reason I wanted to do this mission was because it unlocked something. What it unlocked is this repair bay. Uh, so I was just driving in at the minute to kind of get them get the old pair together. And uh, what I noticed though, just after like this was now going to be after the video, I went to go and refuel them, and I was like, hang on a minute, I've got nine hundred liters of fuel in my scout trailer which I've clearly like I used about four to 600 litres out of it. So I drove out of the little repair square thing. Um, my loaf needs, what, 12 litres or something, so I believe I've got 888 litres of fuel in the Scout Fuel trailer. Drive back to this little repair square, and you'll see in kind of the middle right-hand side of the screen, it says repair supplies restocked. So I go back into my fuel, and I've got 900 litres. So long story short, with a little trailer and a loaf here, this is not only a repair station, it's now a fuel station because I can just keep refueling, uh, refilling that trailer all day long. I tried it this way, I disconnected the trailer and left it on its own, refilled the Dolphin, went out the menu, back in the menu, it's still missing the fuel. So you have to have it connected to the loaf or a scout for it to, because it's restocking the loaf, including its trailer, it's not in doing the trailer. Hi, I'm Johnny Loesfeld, welcome to Jackass. Uh, I needed some damage. <laughs> We needed to know these things. So I fixed it, because what I wanted to do was like obviously drain a little bit of my uh, roof rack. So I've definitely just fixed some stuff. Drive back in here again, repair supplies restocked or whatever. Go back to my roof rack, I've got 300 points again. So, it's also unlimited amount of repairs. And I know what you're going to say, well obviously it's a repair square, so you don't need the roof rack on the loaf. But... You do, because now it turns this into a mobile fuel station and repair point. Like, for example, what if I got my dolphin this far? There's the square, and you're just over there back in the yard. What if I ran out of fuel now? You know, I could have bust the fuel tank, and it's chucking fuel out. Broke down, whatever. If I, I could be half a truck length away from that repair square, but if I can't touch it, I'm going to have to now recover to the garage and drive all the way back. Having... A dedicated scout and the trailer there with a roof rack. It's now a mobile repair station and fuel station. I could zip it out here. I mean, again, the roads around here. Um, I could even leave, say, like the dolphin and loaf there. So it's if I've got to trek a bit further, the loaf will still get through all this snow, but it'll be a little bit slow. Obviously, you'd be better off winching it behind a dolphin. Um, yeah, so there you go. Though I can run out of the garage and yeah kind of fixing so that is uh, I definitely recommend this mission barefoot cobbler it was called and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy I've got it done I'll be leaving him here I reckon but yeah that's about it for today though I hope you enjoyed I hope that helps thanks for watching thanks to my Patreon members get yourself a life and I'll be back soon